Hi, my name is Eric Whitkop, and today we are going to take a look at a Palo Alto VPN connection using Okta, but more importantly, we're going to look at how it can do mutual TLS using PIV CAC cards. Here's the environment that I have set up today, and, and I learned a lot as I went through this, um, and so hopefully you can learn from my mistakes and it'll go smoother for you. Um, I did notice that I needed to use the clap. I can't use the classic Okta interface. You have to use what's called the OIE. It has a lot more um, uh, identity providers, and there's one that's called Smart Card IDP that I had to have to be able to do mutual TLS. Then I went out and grabbed a YubiKey 5CI. This is the exact model I have in my MacBook. Um, YubiKey is a great product. It was my first time playing around with it. Um, I love that the admin tool works on multiple different OS's. I loved how easy it was to provision uh, a PKI cert onto the card. I love the small form factor and the different shapes it comes in. And um, I just overall, I thought compared to some of the other smart card um, out there, it was super easy to use and I understand why they're so successful now. I have a, a virtual machine, a Palo VM series in AWS as it were. Um, running 10.1. My GP is 620, which is right now, as of today, is the latest and greatest. And I'm using a MacBook Pro M1 Ventura. So I mentioned that I had um, a few uh, hurdles to overcome as I was going to deploy this. And the big thing that I learned about was the default browser versus the embedded browser inside of Global Protect. So inside of Global Protect, there is a uh, um, an IE, uh, you know, Internet Explorer Trident engine. It's a basically a library from Microsoft that's built into Global Protect. It's a very small little embedded browser, about the size of your hand, and it is not your Chrome browser that's local to your machine. It's embedded. It's part of their solution. It has its limitations, and so while M like Microsoft is continuing to support it until 2029, they're not adding new features. The feature that's missing that I absolutely need is that pop-up where it goes, hey, where's your uh, YubiKey and where's that X509 certificate that I need to authenticate? The pop-up piece is not working in the embedded browser on a MacBook Pro. You need to use your default browser, which is fine. And, and if you think about it, that scales beautifully if you're on Linux, other uh, anything that supports Chrome, for example, will work perfectly because the, the user in this case, the end user is going to go directly over to Okta from the, their, the client perspective and not go to th or through the firewall for that piece. Once authenticated, the, the uh, SAML assertion is passed off over to, in this case, the service provider, which would be uh, the Palo Alto firewall, right? Um, so. <sighs> You have to use the default browser of your local machine, in this case, a MacBook Pro. Uh, the issue was I went into the, my, my uh, Global Protect settings uh, in the firewall, which are supposed to come down to my, my GP client, and it simply wasn't working. Couldn't figure it out, didn't know why, didn't know what was going on. I finally found a document here, right here for 10.1 that tells you exactly how to do it. Essentially, you are going to basically hack your plist file and I give you the instructions down here on your MacBook Pro. On Linux, same thing has to be done in the opt Palo Alto Networks directory. You have to hack a file with VI. So just know that going into it, um, you'll save yourself some heartburn. And now it's demo time. Okay, so here is that setting I was talking about in the, uh, the Palo Alto firewall where you're supposed to be able to send down a yes, no value uh, for the default browser setting. So if you come over here, I'm going a little fast, you can always pause it. Um, use default browser for SAML authentication, yes. Okay, so I had that set, couldn't get it to work. Um, no matter what I did, I, I tried downloading the Global Protect agent from the firewall again um, from an from a agent or client perspective, which is not necessary, by the way. For, for, Anytime you make a change here, you don't have to do that, but I tried it anyway. Um, I upgraded to the latest version of Global Protect, didn't make a difference. I was troubleshooting with the debug files on the client side. I saw the value was being represented and parsed by the agent, but yet not enforced. Couldn't quite figure it out. Anyway, we've already talked about this and we understand 
um, that the, there's there's a couple of limitations in this space. Uh, so, so from here, I'll just do a quick demo and show you what the user experience looks like as we go to authenticate. My YubiKey is already inserted. This is what you can customize this page. I've customized it for Iron Bow and put the Pentagon in the background. But pretend like you're a Gov employee and you want to authenticate with a CAC card uh, to VPN. It pops up. I see I have two certificates on here. And this is how you know that you're talking to the YubiKey because I'm seeing um, a, a YubiKey PIV on here also. I'm not talking to my local key ring on my MacBook. So this is the user in question. This is all fake information. This is not a real DOD certificate. I have just made a fake CA called DOD.mil, okay? Um, and then I'm gonna say, okay. So what's happening is I'm in my default browser. Now it needs to go back over to, to GP, to Global Protect. And it's completed. And I'm connected. Okay, um, using IPsec, um, nothing else is interesting here. Um, so let's go over to our firewall logs. Here I am coming in, gateway uh, connected, SAML authenticated, um, and it works, all right. Uh, I can show you some of my parameters. A lot of the work is done in the, uh, the, the portal instead of the gateway. It's done at the portal level. Um, see here, certificates none. Agent, I already showed you that. Um, I'm pushing down some CA. That's my CA that I talked about, DOD fake. Push that down. Take a look at the gateway. Certificates none. And we're not doing that. So that's it, folks. Um, any questions, feel free to reach out to your local Iron Bow uh, sales man or woman. And uh, we'd love to schedule a meeting and talk more about all the great work that Iron Bow is doing in this space. Thank you.